okay just in case my arms shoulders and anything else are getting in the way is a little quick close up of where we've got to um, while it's drying off I've got some acrylic thinners out and brought back in those numbers um, I did want them kind of knock them back a bit but on reflection they were a little bit too taken away so I put a little bit of acrylic thinners on just to knock out the weathering powders and what have you just so you can make out to four and eight on the end but as you can see from there the typhus corrosion is now starting to bubble up and give its rusted appearance particularly at this end and around the chimney so it's doing what I want it to do so we'll wait till it dries completely and then we'll come back See you in a bit. Bye. Hi folks. Right, okay. The rust treatment has now dried in sufficiently. So we're just going to go back over and touch things up as they were before. Now, I know you can't see that on the camera because it's too far away at the minute. but it does actually help seeing the rust underneath it so just a little more white in there and back off the brush again and we'll go into a bit of rain oxide or rust rather, see, cut it on again, cut it on this morning, cut it on again now I've been thinking while I've been off camera that I suppose really <coughs> you could argue that I'm doing this backside first the question could be asked why don't we just put the um, the typhus corrosion on to begin with um, and then do the paints on top well that's a fair comment and I don't have an answer <laughs> it's, it's to be straight and honest um, it, this is just it's how I've done it before it worked and I suppose if I'm honest I don't want to try it the other way in case it doesn't there should be no reason why it won't um, I just like getting a bit of an idea as to what the model's going to look like first before I start throwing the uh, corrosion, typhus corrosion on so it's again it's just I'm not telling you how to do it here um, this isn't meant to be a this is what you should do etc this is very much for me a case of this is what I do this is how I do it this is not meant to be me dictating to you what you should or shouldn't be doing it's just a simple case of Graham suggested that I do a little tutorial um, so I thought right ok if somebody like Graham thinks that it's worth me doing the tutorial then must be because he's got a lot of people following him and a lot of people like what he does uh, me included obviously so I thought right fine ok you think we're might have something worth looking at then that's what I'm doing but it is not a as I say I'm not trying to tell you what or how I'm just trying to say to you this is the way that I do it this is how I manage to get them to bear I want them to be and what they look like when I've got them there now as you can see I've totally changed the concept of this now um, the rust effect which again I know you can't see it yet because we're not close up um, it's just kind of taking me down a, a slightly different tack to where I was this morning which may change again no and me and how I operate but who knows um too close because you're on zoom aren't you I'm forgetting forget that I'll do it in a bit that wasn't working I forgot my other half set the camera up behind me so that I could make sure that my shoulder is not in the way of what I'm doing so we've got the red on 
the rust. Let's have a little of the iron oxide here and there. As I said before, there is no real skill involved here with me. It is literally, I do what I think appears to me to be what I'm looking for. So, we'll see how it goes. So, we're back to the, the red and the orange that we had earlier. I think you'd agree at the moment that that's one very rusty, battered looking piece of machinery. So we'll go with soot on the tops and we'll just dull this down a bit. Again, I don't want to go too far with it. I just want to bring it down a little bit. Just want to punch it in in a few areas, just knocking it back a little bit. Just like we did it on the last part of the video, we're just knocking it down. Oh, pardon me, sorry. Again, put around there. Just to knock it back a little. I don't want it to look too rough at the top. And we're going to change now to the dark earth. I'm just going to take a little off the brush. I don't want too much of this in there. just picking bits up a bit. A bit of dark earth just to tone this down just a bit. So a little bit to rest. Again, still a little bit too red for me. and she's dirty. She's had quite a hard life. And she's just about ready to head off to the scrapyards. We have a last few few duties to do before the family gets replaced with the diesel. Finish work on my steam trains. I think I've only got uh, one, two, three. I've got another five to do. Um, then it'll be time to start on the diesel fleet and start putting that into some semblance of order. Just going to put a bit of black up here. A little bit. a little bit too rusty. I'm just going to tone it down just a little. One other thing I should warn you about with the weathering powder is they uh, don't wear any nice clothes when you use them. <laughs> they are um, somewhat messy, can leave some nice stains on your clothes. So I tend to wear my working attire when I've got these things on the go. Um, I certainly wouldn't wear anything that I would normally wear to go out of the house with because you'll just ruin it. Is the honest bit? 
so back to white and grey again a little bit of ash built up let's just chuck it in there over the top and then a few a few I went mad there there we are that's what I'm looking for uh, I do have um, sometimes sometimes I will put a little a little bit of um, liquid cloths um, just here and there dribs and drabs just to make it look like water collected up and what have you um, and the last thing I'm going to do is get back in here with the sand again remembering I don't want the middle wheel like I did earlier so as you can see I am just dotting it about yes you're going to have to clean your wheels off if you do it this way but at the same time the wheel's got to be spotless to run anyway so I can look at it and think well <coughs> these things were old and battered when I got them and I didn't run they do run now um, probably won't have to have done all of this but that doesn't matter I can, uh, I can sharp sort that out <coughs> so there you go um, my finished article exactly what I wanted I wanted something that looked very very rusty almost to the point where it maybe shouldn't be on the tracks anymore um, <coughs> all I need to do now is to give it a coat of this um, which I'll go and take outside and give it a quick spray over and that will hold the, pow the powders on um, as I say there's lots of other ways to do it you can spray it um, I've seen people using pastel colours you name it this is what I saw was the Humbrol weathering stuff I really like it um, I feel quite at home with it it's very easy to blend together um, I don't think I could master an eye brush well enough to pull this off um, but yeah there you go that's my thoughts that's what I think I'll put a couple of still shots of it on at the end of the video to see it we'll see what it completely looks like thanks for watching folks if you like what you saw don't forget to subscribe um, and please pass a comment if you did like this my very first tutorial thanks Mr. Forson for convincing me to do it I owe you one catch you later bye bye now